All right, let's go uh, into some policy questions. We've got uh, the next question tonight comes from Ella Miller. Um, yes, I'd like to ask about Mr Abbott. He seems to be a man of many contra uh, contradictions because on the one hand, he appears to wear his religious values and beliefs like a badge of honour. And yet on the other hand, he's quite capable of behaving in policy issues and humanitarian issues, very, very unchristian. Does this make him a chameleon? And is he capable of doing and saying anything to become the not next Prime Minister, regardless of what it takes? Yes, I'm wrong about that being a policy question, but uh, David Ma, you're probably well placed to uh, answer it. Did you write that? <laughs> Look, <we're... laughs> no, but I, but, um, but uh, you, you point to one of the fascinating things about Tony Abbott. Um, he is a, a highly successful, aggressive, populist politician. But all through his career, he has argued that there is another side to him, that there is a deep commitment to values. And they are, they are very traditional Catholic values. But there's no occasion in his political career where those values have stood in the way of, of his politics. When it comes down to it, and this is something that a lot of people might find reassuring, when it comes down to it, Tony Abbott is an absolutely secular politician. Now, he quite, he wears as a badge of honour the fact that he was one of the few ministers in the Howard government who pointed out that work choices was not only a bad idea politically, but actually unfair. He pointed that out, he was overruled, cabinet solidarity, he went with cabinet solidarity, and he was brutal to critics from the churches who publicly flayed the Howard government for work choices. Abbott, uh, Abbott was brutal in reply. He was a completely conventional, secular politician when the occasion came. Now, his, his beliefs are real, his values are real, and one of the very interesting things is going to be if he becomes prime minister, as he seems at the moment certain to become prime minister, what of his values will actually will he actually display? Because those values are very interesting. He's in many ways a DLP cuckoo in the Liberal Party nest. <laughs> he's not, he comes from the Labour movement. He's not, he's not for small government, he believes in big government. He doesn't worship the market. He doesn't see the purpose of government to make people richer. None of that. He doesn't see the purpose of government is to kick the guts out of the trade union movement. He doesn't see any of that. There's a lot of concentration on his views on women and sex and all of those Catholic things, which really he can do nothing about in office. The question is, will he be as fair as he might be if he was true to his values? That's going to be the most interesting question in Australian politics in 2014. David, um, he... Uh pronounced your essay, um, and I, even in spite of the fact that you're saying all these things in the essay and the longer piece, is uh, fair-minded and generous, more fair-minded and generous than he expected in, in any event. Did you find yourself warming to him as you wrote it, and would he make a good <laughs> Prime Minister? I'm fascinated by people and character, Tony. Mm. Um, I've always, there's always a big part of Tony Abbott that I've liked. He's a man of immense charm great charm, and, face to, and people who know him face to face um, are always reproaching journalists for the kinds of things we write, because they say, he's not like that, he's this, you know, I've been on polypedals with him and he's marvellous, etc. Et he's all of that. He's very, very interesting. Um, he is, as I say, this strange cuckoo in the Liberal Party nest. Um, I'm fascinated by him. I'm absolutely fascinated by this man. He has this huge public reputation for aggression, and yet those who work closely with him say he doesn't seek conflict. He's in fact, he's in fact a very good chair of committees. He was very interesting in cabinet, to the exasperation of many other ministers in the Howard cabinet. He always wanted to talk about the issues at length. And, oh, Tony, come on, We've got business to do. But he believed in the cabinet notion of talking around the table. He's a very interesting man. Um, and, and, will he, and, and very briefly, your opinion, will he make a good Prime Minister? Do you know the thing we've, got to look, we've learned in this country 
is that the only way you can tell whether a person's going to be a good prime minister is when they have the job. Because we thought, I think Australia thought, that Kevin Rudd was going to be a superlative prime minister. And he was in many ways a good prime minister, but he, but he, but he kind of fell apart on the job. John okay. Howard learnt on the job. Tony Abbott will have to learn on the job. My guess about Tony Abbott is that he's not going to be the strong man that Australians think he is. And in fact, the problem for Abbott may be exerting his authority. Well, hopefully we'll never get to find out. <laughs> <laughs> Sergio Mirabella.